buddy. <laughs> but he just came in. So I'm doing a little, um, I'm trying to protect these hoses so they don't get, um, you know, UV rays don't eat them up and they crack. So to prolong the life, I ordered some of these buddy nose. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Dad's fixing his little tractor. So uh, this this wrap that I got up here is um, it's UV protectant and it's pretty heavy duty. So I've done this side. You can tell I've just kind of wrapped it around the hoses there, and um, it goes on pretty easy. I just wanted to. Um, there's no instructions, so I don't even know if I know how to write. Maybe somebody can tell me if there's a better way. So I will do this little hose right there and show you a couple ways to do it. First thing I do is measure it. So I measure this little hose here and longer is better for sure. So I'm going to cut that one about right there. And it's pretty freaking hard to cut. I found that if I pull them both down and cut it'll cut easier. So then once I, once I cut it off, you put one end in and once you get the first little loop around it, you can either loop the whole piece around it and hold it, otherwise it'll spin. And it kind of takes a while to do it. Or you can kind of spin it. And if you spin it, it'll actually twist up if it's on a straightaway and keep spinning around and it'll go on that way. So by spinning it, this whole thing is spinning and it's just twisting. Or you can loop it. If it's short and easy, looping is a little quicker. But when it's in tight corners, twisting's a little easier. And then overlapping it and then unwinding it afterwards also works. So that one is done, and that is how I put it on. Um, hopefully that came out. It comes in 25 foot lengths, so I have no idea how much I've done here. I've done one, two, three, four hoses, and one of them is pretty long. So I did the short one here, so I have to do one, two, three, and these are the main ones, I think. There might be a few more. <laughs> Hi, little Ransom. <laughs> it's like, dude, are you feeding us? Hi, guys. I'm not feeding. I'm working on the tractor. It's hot out here, huh? I know. All right. So just figured I would little share a little video in case somebody's ever used that stuff. It looks pretty good. Looks like it'll keep the sun off. It's pretty thick. May even keep the rats from chewing on it. Uh, I've ordered some other stuff to put around my wires. Uh, <laughs> why are you guys talking to me? I'm trying to videotape. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let me get back to this. Hi, hey, tractor people. So I got the tractor back and was working on the hoses and kind of checking and clean up some of the rust things. And uh, I figured I'd check the bearings. Uh, there was a lot of grease in there, but it was pretty dirty and black. So I went ahead and pulled it off and repacked the bearing, which was a three-hour job for one bearing. I mean, getting that on and trying to get it back on was freaking crazy. And then I went ahead and put some of that uh, polish on the rim. You can tell this rim, I ought to put them side by side so you can tell the difference of the faded. This is what it looked like before I did it. You can kind of tell on this one, I did the inside a little bit and the outside a little bit. So I need to finish this tire with that... Uh, polish to remove that oxidation but that's what the front one looked like keep that in your mind 
and now it looks like that with a little just a little polish compared to what it did look like so anyway i mean it's not that necessary i was cleaning it off and i'm just baiting to put some paint on some of the rust i've got some of that orange spray paint you can tell i touched up a couple nicks here when they took it in the shop they scratched it all up here so i i put some uh little paint there this was a big old rust spot right here so i put two coats of that orange paint on that that was a little nicked up uh it was really rusting underneath the Komodo over here pretty bad like right here was like all discolored and rusted so i sprayed a little there with that uh some of that Komodo spray you can tell i just kind of hit all the places that could rust this thing underneath here was a complete freaking rust bucket i couldn't believe i don't even know what it looks like now i put it down here when it's probably still wet a little better i mean it was just all rusted out so i went ahead and cleaned that off and hit it with a coat of paint slow down that rusting and uh I think that's it so i'll make this another day i pulled off the cap and there's oil just like the other one so i mean it's got enough grease in there but it, it's pretty black and i'm sure it's never been done and now it's got good fresh red stuff that i can tell if it's when it gets old but um it's not like i'm doing a whole bunch of racing or high speed whatever i wanted to clean this up and get a look at the tire and as i cleaned the tire up i looked at that and i went crap that doesn't look good. So, uh, and again, I didn't really inspect it before it left. I learned my lesson this time because it came back with so many scratches and new crap. I'm gonna take a picture of every side before it goes for service next time. If you remember, this was really scratched up and all the paint was gone. So I just sprayed that down to kind of stop the rust on that. But anyway, I'm not worried about the bucket because I'm gonna scrape it up anyway. So I, I mean that, just using it's gonna keep the rust off it. Uh, so anyway, just a, a little bearing pack and a uh, tractor maintenance. I went ahead and checked this uh, level on this thing. It's got a, uh, a fill level. That little screw at the bottom is a fill level. So I screwed that off. No oil came out. Oil's supposed to come out. So I opened that up and I squirted some mobile one in there until it ran out. Um, I would like to change it, but there's no drain plug. And because it's like 80, 90, really thick, I got a suction thing. I just haven't tried to suck it out to... To clean it out and even if i suck it out i'm not going to get all the little lead pieces at the bottom and the dirt that i really want that's why i want a good drain plug i know i could put a magnet in there and kind of wiggle around and get some of the metal pieces but uh and i may do that at some time but i got it with oil i'll look at it other than that uh it's saturday and uh i'm doing my live later but i'm tired all right we'll see y'all later okay finished project uh, I didn't go all the way on those because it has a, a cover right there that covers that loop. So I just went down to where a little past the loop there to get those four tubes. And then on the other side, I just went also down to the loop. And then I've got the, uh, the hoses up front here and all the way down side and these hoses up front and all the way down sides. And that took 25 feet with this much left. So this is how much I have left out of 25 feet. Um, so hopefully that will uh, give me a little bit better protection from branches, things hitting it, puncturing the tubes. It protects its UV resistance, so it'll protect the sun from rotting out those tubes any quicker. Um, and if I hit a tree or something, it's less likely to puncture my hose if it hits that hard plastic. Fairly easy job. Took me about, uh, I don't know. I came out here earlier and worked maybe 15, 20 minutes. Then I came back out and finished it in maybe 30 minutes. So less than an hour and I have uh, pretty much all my hoses. The only three hoses that I do not have done are these three right here. Uh, they're kind of in the shade as it is because of the cover and by the leg and they're protected by that thing so they're if I had to leave something undone I was going to leave those undone um, anyway so uh, <laughs> those little rants heard me talking what are you doing boy 
What are you doing coming in here? I just gave you an apple. I know it's hot. You probably want a bath, don't you? Should I pull you out and hose you down? Huh? You want to get hosed down, boy? All right. Well, in that there. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention the other thing I did. I um, the toolbox was gone on this sucker when I got it. So I um, connected a ammo can to where the old toolbox was. So there was already two little holes drilled into here with nuts welded. So all I had to do was find the right nut. For anybody who has a Kubota tractor, it is a 8 millimeter with a 1.24 pitch. Uh, and that's the two bolts I had to go buy. And in that ammo can now I have... Uh, I'm going to put a tourniquet in there. I didn't put a tourniquet in there yet. I took the handle off here and the handle off here so it wouldn't rattle. So I've got pliers and things, a couple toe straps, some duct tape, and just some extra pins and clips here. In case I lose something out in the pasture somewhere. So uh, now I have a, uh, a little toolkit there that I can put some stuff in. And Buddy came in. Hi, Buddy! What are you doing? Oh my goodness! Little horsies wanna... They wanna say hello to the YouTube camera. What are you guys doing? I got this Himalayan salt block thingy and they're not really licking on it too much, but anyway. Um, <laughs> I know! Well, the other thing I did is I put this quick hitch on. Shit, I forgot about that. This is called a... Pat's quick hitch. Um, let me go over the price. The two bolts were like two or three bucks and I already had the ammo can. The plastic was about 20 bucks for 25 feet and these two things were 199 bucks but I couldn't connect. Uh, these things are very very touchy when you disconnect the three-point. So this I can back up, I can see it and just lift it right up on the bar and then I can get off and put my pins in. So uh, this makes hook up much quicker. I think it's called Pat Quick Release is what it's called. And uh, that's it. Well, that there. Tractor people, horsies, are good boys.